believe Give charity For the pleasure of Allah The pleasure of Allah Oh, you who believe Read the Quran Every night of Ramadan Night of Ramadan Welcome, oh Ramadan It is Ramadan It is Ramadan Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic Zakah, part two. Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakia, following on from the first episode we had on zakah, I'd like to ask you, if I may, if a shopkeeper has a number of goods in the shop, is zakat applicable on all of the goods in the shop or just some of them? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmain, amma baad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي as far as zakat on goods in the shop all the merchandise and goods for trade and commerce which are bought and sold whether it be property land whether it be animals foods machinery with the stationery, with the food stuff, anything, all of them are liable for zakat. And whatever goods that are there in a grocery shop, or whatever is there for trade, there should be an inventory made. And all should be noted down. And once in a year, take the stock of all the goods available, whatever is there for trade, irrespective of what it is, cars, vehicles, whatever it is, they should be noted down. And Zakat should be paid at two and a half percent. Whatever is there in the shop, the stock, as well as the profit was remaining at the end of the year, that are calculating on, should be noted down, and zakat should be paid at 2.5 percent. Except the land of the shop and the furniture and the vehicle used for transport, these can be exempted from zakat. Otherwise, all the trading stock, everything should be calculated for zakat. Okay, thank you for the answer. Now, in terms of paper currency, money, how should zakah be calculated? As far as paper currency is concerned, it is interchangeable with gold and silver. We should try and find out the value of your paper currency, and that keeps on changing. We can either evaluate what is the amount of currency that will reach the Nisab level, either with the nisab of the gold, that is 85 grams of gold, or the nisab of the silver, that is 595 grams of silver. So we should try and find out what would be the cost of 85 grams of gold in your country, in your currency, or 595 grams of silver in your country, in your currency. Now the different opinion that what should we take as nisab? Should we take the nisab of the gold or the silver? Some of the focus say, that take the lower limit so that a person gives zakat even though the nisab is low. Some of the fuqahs say that take the nisab which is higher so that that gives advantage to the poor person and need not pay till it reaches the higher level of the nisab. While other fuqahs say that since silver was used as a way of trading in the olden days, so we should take the nisab of the silver and try and find out what is your currency as far as 595 grams of silver is concerned. But this option is left. But if you really want to be more sure, then you can take the lower level of nisab. And normally silver, the rate of silver nowadays, 595 grams of silver, is much less than 85 grams of gold. 
we should see what is the current value. Suppose you're calculating the zakat to be paid at one particular date, whether it be the first of Ramadan, whatever it is, we have to find out what is the value of 595 grams of silver or 85 grams of gold at that time. Now at present in India, the value of one gram of gold is approximately 900 rupees. That will be approximately 22, 23 dollars for one gram of gold. This rate of silver and gold will change in each country. What is the value in India will change, what's in Dubai, may change in America, may change in UK, and the currencies also keep on fluctuating. In India today, approximately, for one gram of gold is approximately 900 rupees. That comes to 20 to 23 dollars. That means 85 grams of gold, the Nisab level, would be 76,500 rupees, approximately. In dollars, it would be somewhere close to 1,900 dollars. If you want to take the Nisab level of silver, then one kg of silver, approximately, costs in India 18,000 rupees. That's equal to 450 dollars. So 595 grams of silver would cost approximately 10,710 rupees. And in dollars, it will be about 268 dollars, approximately. But the rate will change in Dubai, will change in UK, will change in USA. So wherever you're living, you can take any financial magazine, economic magazine, and try and find out the rate, and you can calculate yourself. And if it reaches that level, then you should give zakat, if it's above that also. So 2.5% on whatever savings you have, whatever surplus you have, you have to give that much zakat that year. Zakalak, and also there are many zakat calculators available on, online free as well, aren't there? So. <laughs> Another thing that always worried me slightly is, um, is zakat um, applicable on money that you've loaned out? As far as money that is lent, anything lent, whether it is gold that is given on loan, or silver, or money, or currency, the person who owns that, he has to pay zakat on it. Though I know, that the one you have lent to, but natural, without any rabba, without interest, that's haram in Islam. Yeah. If you have lent to someone, then the person who owns it has to pay, and the person who uses it, he doesn't have to pay. And you have to calculate it, for example, if you have given for a business deal, saying that we share the profit, then it is your money, yet you have to pay the zakat. There are two types of loan that are given, one is secured loan and the other is unsecured loan. If you give to one of your friends or relatives a loan without any riba interest, just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it is a secured loan, knowing the person is rich and return it to you, you have to pay zakat every year. So if you give it and about a couple of years pass, maybe two or three years pass, you have to pay every year the zakat on that amount. If you have lent 100,000 rupees, hundred thousand dollars, then you have to pay two and a half thousand rupees or two and a half thousand dollars every year on the money you have lent every year. If you do not have the money, the money you have lent is all that you had and you cannot pay zakat, then when it comes back to you, if it comes back to you after three years, then you have to pay for the three years. That is three into 2.5, you have to pay 7.5 percent. That's seven half thousand dollars or seven half thousand rupees. And the other type of loan is an unsecured loan where the person who you have given to may be poor and you have doubts whether he will be able to repay the money or not. If it is an unsecured loan and if you feel that you may not receive the loan you have given, so if you don't want to pay, you need not pay every year. But if you don't get the money, then you don't pay the zakat. But if you get the money, maybe after five years, then you have to pay for all the years that you had lent. So if you have paid for five years, 5.5 that becomes 12 and a half percent. So you pay 12 and a half thousand rupees or 12 and a half thousand dollars on that amount. Okay, well, I think that's very clear. Thank you very much, Dr. Zaki, for that answer. Are there things um, which a Muslim does not have to pay zakah on? Yes, certain things are exempted from zakat. Number one is your personal goods which are the basic necessities. For example, the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the furniture in your house, a fridge or a microwave oven, all is exempted from zakat. The house in which you live is exempted from zakat. 
if you're carrying a weapon for your safety, irrespective of what the cost of the weapon is, it's a personal belonging, which is a requirement, which is a necessity. That's also free from zakat. If you have a vehicle for traveling, it be a car, it be a motorcycle, it be an animal or horse to ride on, all is exempted from zakat. All your personal belongings are exempted from zakat. All the vegetables also exempted from zakat. If you have any animals that are used for agriculture or for your personal use, that too is exempted from zakat. And the Prophet said that vegetables are exempt from zakat, the ariyat trees are exempt from zakat, the grains, if it is less than five asak, it's exempt from zakat, or any of your animals or personal are exempt from zakat. These are the things on which zakat is not counted. Anything above this, which is surplus, if it reaches the nisab level or above it, then you have to pay zakat on it. The next question really relates to um, the general issue of uh, calculation of zakat. Could you explain to the viewers in um, a nutshell how that is done? There are two methods of zakat can be calculated because zakat is payable when you have it for one year. So you can keep a daily record of what is your wealth above the nisab level. You can keep a weekly record or a monthly record. So then whenever the nisab level is above, then I've noted down the date. On 1st of January, what was the nisab you had? 2nd of January, what you have? So what you had in the 1st of January, say 1st of January 2007. So 1st of January 2008, it will label for zakat. Then what you had on 2nd of January, calculated, then 3rd of January, or on weekly basis, or on monthly basis. But to keep a record of all this is very difficult. Then you'll be spending half the day in keeping the record, which will be difficult. So it's not practical at all. The easier method and the safe method, where mistake, inshallah, would be avoided, is picking one particular day in the full year and calculate it exactly one year after that. Most of the people prefer Ramadan because it is the month of charity and you get more blessings and more rewards. But Ramadan is not the only month that you have to pick up. You can pick up any day of the year. But it should be calculated according to the Hijri calendar, not according to the solar calendar. So 1st of January 2007, 1st of January 2008 is wrong. It should be 1st Shaban or 1st of Hajj. But since Ramadan is the most pious month, first of Ramadan, you can take any day of Ramadan. If you take first of Ramadan, calculate all the assets that you have. And next year, if it's first of Ramadan, 1420 Hijri, then first of Ramadan, 1421 Hijri, you should see what amount you have. Now, if you calculate only on one day and see exactly one Hijri or later, one lunar later. It is the safest method. There can never be any possibility that you will give less zakat. There can be high chances you may give more zakat, but never less. Why? If you keep on calculating daily, then the level keeps on going up and down. But if you calculate one particular day of the year, which day you pick up, and if that happens to be the lowest collection, the lowest saving in the full year, Yet, you are paying the minimum amount of zakat. Say on the first of Ramadan, you have 100,000 rupees as saving, or 100,000 dollars as saving. And that happens to be the lowest saving in the full year. Yet, since it's the lowest, you have to pay zakat on what you possess for one full year. So you have to pay 2,500 rupees or 2,500 dollars on that amount. It's safe. But it may be that it is the highest saving of the full year. So here itself, you may be paying a little bit more zakat, but you won't be paying less. But some people may think, oh, it is a high saving. That means, you know, I may be paying unnecessary more amount. There are chances you may pay more, but there are no chance you'll pay less. Because even if it is the highest, and if you think that you will try and catch the lowest point, the lowest point may keep on changing. It may be in the month of Shaban. It may be in the month of Rajab, maybe in the month of Hajj. And then if you try and catch that point, next year it will again change. So if you try and catch that point, there are high chances you'll pay less zakat. So best is to pick up one point, one day in the full hijri calendar, and keep on taking that every year. And you'll be less assured that 
you will never pay less zakat, you may pay more. Because if the wealth keeps on fluctuating, up and down, you have to pay on what amount you possess for the full year. Yeah. But the lowest point once, maybe Shaban, the other maybe Ramadan, the third maybe Hajj, maybe any month, the safest is to pick up anyone and keep on sticking to that year. And inshallah, you'll never pay less. You may pay more. Sometimes 10% more, 20% more, 30% more. It'll never be less, inshallah. So this is the safest method and it's the best method. And on this day, whichever day you pick up, you have to calculate all the savings you have, whether in cash, what is the bank balance, what is the gold you possess, whether in the form of jewelry, whatever stock you possess, whether in shares, whatever investment, all this you put together, or your business, the stock trade of your business, all put together. If you're due to receive some amount from someone, even that has to be calculated because he has given a bit late, but yet it's your property. Or if you have given some loan to someone, that has to be calculated. But if you have to give some money to someone, that has to be deducted from your amount. For example, you have taken a loan of $100,000 or 100,000 rupees, and the total amount is 500,000 rupees that you have in your home, cash in hand, cash in bank, stock everything. So you have to minus from 500,000, 100,000. So you have to pay zakat on 400,000. But if you possess 500,000, and you have given loan of $200,000, to somebody else, and you have to receive hundred thousand dollars because the goods you have sold. So five hundred plus two hundred thousand plus hundred thousand, you have to pay zakat on eight hundred thousand dollars. So in all, you have to calculate on one particular day of the year, and then you have to pay zakat two and a half percent on that. I'd like to ask you though, in the case of a person who unfortunately is a little bit miserly, doesn't really want to pay the zakat, therefore. What advice would you give to that particular person? That person is very well off, but due to miserliness, they decide to forego the zakat. What's your advice to that person? There are various verses in the Quran and several ahadith which you can narrate to these people who are miser and don't want to give zakat. In order to encourage them to give zakat, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fajr, chapter number 89, Verse number 20. And those who love their wealth with excessive love, talking about these people of Maizali, further Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Adiyat, chapter number 100, verse number 8, that, and he is violently in love with the wealth. You know, those people talking about those who love wealth so much and are dying for the wealth. So Allah is giving a warning to these people. Allah says in Surah Taqabun, chapter number 64, verse number 15, that your wealth and your children are a trial for you, are a test for you. Allah is telling all these things that you love so much, are a test, are a trial for you. And there's hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 2336, where the beloved prophet said that every ummah would be tested with something, and my ummah would be tested by wealth. Wealth is the test for my ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 17 to 33. And Allah narrates the story of a person who owns a beautiful big garden. And this person was very charitable. Whatever earnings he got from the garden, he spent whatever was required on the family and in maintaining the garden. And the rest, everything used to give in charity. So this continued for a long time. After this person died, his children, they said, that what a fool our father was. He gave everything in charity. So they decided that when whatever harvest they get, whatever goods they get, they will slowly at night take it away to their own homes, the children decided, and no one will come to know. So when the fruits and everything came, they took it to their homes, and next day, when they came to the garden, everything was ruined. And the complete garden was absolutely ruined. And only their garden was affected. And there the Quran says in Surah Kalam, chapter 68, verse number 31. And we have transgressed the limit. And Allah says in the next verse, in Surah Kalam, chapter 68, verse 33, that for these people, there is a punishment in this world and more severe punishment in the hereafter. 
I mean, those who love the wealth and are miserly people, there's a punishment in this world. In the next world, there is a bigger punishment. So those people who are miserly and don't want to give zakat, actually zakat is for purification, for whatever impurity you have will be washed away, and it's to increase your wealth. As the Prophet said, I said earlier, that charity does not decrease your wealth. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Layl, chapter number 92, verse number 8 to 11, that those people who are miser and who think that they are self-sufficient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their path of miserness smooth for them. But the wealth will not save them and they will fall headlong into the pit. The miser people think that wealth is sufficient for them, they themselves will actually perish. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 180, that those who covetously hold on to the wealth that Allah has given them, thinking that it will be good to them, actually it will be a loss for them. And on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, their wealth will be wound around their neck and it will be a loss for them. So a person should be reminded that zakat is to increase his wealth. And zakat is given to decrease the love for wealth. As Allah says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 92, that you are not a believer until you give what you love. So zakat is to decrease your love for wealth and increase the brotherhood amongst the Muslims and purify your wealth and increase your wealth. Well, Dr. Zakia, I think we've now reached the stage where we've uh, defined zakat and um, how it's calculated. But I'd like to move on now to the different categories of people um, who are eligible to take the zakat or to whom the zakat is paid. Could you first confirm the different categories of people that can first receive the zakat? The categories of people who can receive zakat is mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 60. The first is the fuqara, that is the poor. Second is the masakin, that is the needy. Third is the amilun, those who are involved in collection of the zakat. Fourth is muallah futu al khulub, those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam. Fifth are the riqab, that is, zakat can be given to free a captive or in bondage. Sixth are the gharimun, those who are debtors. Seventh is fi sabilillah, zakat can be used in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eighth is the ibn sabil, that's the wayfarer. So there are eight categories specified in the glorious Quran to whom zakat can be given. Dr. Zaki, can you also, as a point of reference, what is the punishment for a person who foregoes the obligation of zakat? The punishment for those people who refuse to pay zakat or are neglectful in paying of zakat, and a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's Mish Hadith of Tabrani, that the person who does not pay zakat, his wealth will be destroyed. And the Prophet said further, in the Sahih Hadith of Sayyid al targhib volume number one, Hadith number 758, that those who are neglectful in paying of zakat, there will be a calamity brought to them, maybe like famine, etc. Further, the beloved Prophet said in Ibn Majah and Al-Hakim, that those who are neglectful, those who refrain from paying zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not send rain on them. If it wouldn't have been for the animals and cattle that they have, rain wouldn't have been sent down to them. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 34 and 35, that those who bury gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means do not give zakat, announce to them a grievous penalty. The wealth which they hoarded will be put into the fire of hell and with it they'll be branded on their forehead, on their flank and on their back and it will be told to them, taste the wealth which you hoarded. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Book of Zakat, 
volume number two, hadith number 1403, that those people who do not pay zakat on the day of judgment, their wealth which they have hoarded, on which they have not paid zakat, would be made into a snake, which is a bald-headed snake, bald-headed male poisonous snake, which has marks above the two eyes, and it would be wound around the neck, and it would sting at the cheeks, and would say that I am your wealth, I am your wealth which you treasured. And the Prophet says, and repeats the verse of the Quran that Allah revealed in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse 108, that those who covet the wealth which Allah has given, and thinking that will be good to them, and not spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wealth will be wound down the neck, and it will not benefit them. So this is the punishment for a person who does not give zakat. Further, beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 2161. The beloved Prophet said that those people who do not give zakat on the cattle, these cattle, their horns would be broken or would be twisted or would not be with horns. And with the horns, they would gore the master. And some of the cattle would trample beneath the feet. And this will continue happening till the full day. And one day will be equal to 50,000 years. That's the day of resurrection. And then it will be decided whether these people will go to hell or heaven. Further, it's mentioned in the Hadith of Bukhari, volume number two, in the Book of Zakat, Hadith number 1399 and 1400. There were some Arabs who revolted. They don't want to pay Zakat. Hadith Abu Bakr, may Allah please with him, he said, that these Arabs, Muslims, who do not want to pay zakat, he will wage a war against them. So Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that how can you wage a war against them? Because the messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that only wage a war against those who worship anyone besides Allah and do not say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But then Hazrat Abu Bakr says that but these people are breaking the law. Anyone who differentiates between zakat and salah, that is fard, and does not give zakat, even if he does not give one she kid or one lamb he used to give at the time of the Prophet. Now, if they abstain from giving zakat, he will wage a war against them. And Hazrat Umar, may Allah please with him, says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the heart of Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah please with him. And whatever decision was right. So, there's a grievous penalty for those who do not pay zakat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from not paying the zakat and being amongst those who will be punished as a result of that, Dr. Zakir Naik. Amen. Could you just explain to me the, uh, you use the term fukara and masakin. Could you explain those two terms? The meaning of the word fukara is a poor person, a person who may not have enough money or wealth for his basic necessities. May not have money for his food, lodging, boarding, clothes, furniture, etc. As far as the masakin is concerned, it is a needy person. He may have some of his needs fulfilled, some may not be fulfilled. He may be very poor, he may be less poor. The different categories of masakin, for example, a person may be hand to mouth, he's leading a life, has the basic necessities, but suddenly he develops a heart attack. He may not have the money for his treatment. So he becomes a masakin, he becomes a needy. So you can use a zakat money to help him for his medical treatment. It's a basic need. And as our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1395, where Prophet said that pay zakat on the wealth, on your property, but naturally above the insab level, and take zakat from the rich and give it to the poor, give it to the fuqara. Fuqara are the poor people who may not have the basic necessities and requirements. And masakin is the person who is needy. And whatever is required for a need, if it's fulfilled, it can be fulfilled by zakat money. Okay. Thank you very much for that explanation. Next question. Dr. Zaki, is it um, permitted for people who are appointed to collect the zakat um, to take their salary from the zakat they are collecting, even if that person or group of people uh, appear to be wealthy. 
As I mentioned, the third category who can receive zakat are the amilun, those who are involved in collecting of the zakat or they are administrating the zakat, how it is collected, how it is distributed. So if a person spends his time in the collection of zakat from different Muslims and spends his time in seeing to it that it reads the rightful person who falls in these categories, even if he's wealthy, you can pay from the zakat fund his salary because he is giving his time and he should be paid for the labor he's doing. And there's a hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud, work number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1643, that Ali ibn Sayyidi, may Allah be pleased with him, he was appointed by Hazrat Umar bin Al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, to collect the Zakat funds. And after he collected and gave it to Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, so he needs zakat money to help him for his medical treatment. It's a basic need. And as our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1395, where Prophet said that pay zakat on the wealth, on your property, but naturally above the insab level, and take zakat from the rich and give it to the poor, give it to the fuqara. Fuqara are the poor people who may not have the basic necessities and requirements. And Masakin is the person who is needy. And whatever is required for a need, if it's fulfilled, it can be fulfilled by Zakat money. Okay. Thank you very much for that explanation. Next question. Dr. Zaki, is it um, permitted for people who are appointed to collect the Zakat um, to take their salary from the Zakat they are collecting, even if that person or group of people uh, appear to be wealthy? As I mentioned, the third category who can receive zakat are the amilun, those who are involved in collecting of the zakat or they are administrating the zakat, how it is collected, how it is distributed. So if a person spends his time in the collection of zakat from different Muslims and spends his time in seeing to it that it reads the rightful person who falls in these categories, even if he's wealthy, you can pay from the zakat fund his salary because he is giving his time and he should be paid for the labor he's doing. And there's a hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud, work number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1643, that Ali ibn Sayyidi, may Allah be pleased with him, he was appointed by Hazrat Umar bin Al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, to collect the Zakat funds. And after he collected and gave it to Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he gave him some money. So he said, I did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My reward will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't require this money. So he said, take it and keep it. Because I was also appointed by the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave me money. And when he gave me money, I said somewhat same thing what you had said. But he told me that if you are given something for which you have not asked, don't refuse it and use it for your personal thing and take it as sadqa. So even though you're rich, if someone gives you, so this proves that a person who is rich also can be given for the service he has given for collecting and the administration of the zakat funds. Jazakallah khair. Could you just explain the, when it comes to the term, uh, to those peoples whose hearts are inclined towards Islam or the religion, who does that include, that category of people? This is the fourth category mentioned in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9. Verse number 60, Mu'allah Futul Kulub. Those whose hearts are inclined toward Islam. And there are various categories that can come in this. For example, can be used for propagation. Those who are newly converted Muslims, or rather the word revert is the right word. They've reverted to Islam. And to strengthen their faith, the money can be used. It can be used for the propagation to see to it that non-Muslims are given knowledge of Islam, so their hearts come toward, toward Islam. And there's a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 2318. The Hadith Ali, he sent some gold nuggets to the Prophet, which along with some dust particles. So the Prophet gave it to four different people of different tribes. But the people of the tribe of Quraysh, they felt a bit bad that the Prophet 
was a bit partial and didn't give it to any of them, but gave it to the Naj tribe. So the Prophet said, the reason I gave is for reconciliation. I wanted the heart to be strengthened towards Islam. So Prophet used that to give it to a particular group of people so that they come closer to Islam. So this is one of the ways that zakat can be used for getting people closer to Islam, whether it be reverts, new converts, or those also who may be going away from Islam if you use that money so that the thing is strengthened. For example, there's a revert who is newly reverted to Islam. He may have social problems, he may have economic problems. You can use zakat money to settle him, to buy for him a house if he doesn't have. If he doesn't have a business, you can start a business with that money so that he's secured and he feels happy coming in the new faith. Thank you very much for the answer. Dr. Zakir, could you possibly explain the term to free the captives in terms of zakat? This is the fifth category mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 60, which says, and we use for a kaab, that is freeing of captives. There's a hadith which is mentioned in Musnad Ahmad, volume number four, hadith number 18647, where once a person comes to Prophet Muhammad and asks him that what thing should I do that will take me closer to Jannah, that's paradise, and take me away from hell. So the Prophet tells him that set free a life and liberate a slave. So the person was confused, what is the difference between the two? And he was wondering what's the difference between the two. So he asked the Prophet that, is it one and the same? So he said, no. The first one to set free a life is done individually by you. You can set free a life. But the second one, that is liberating a slave, is done in collaborating with the other people and you have to liberate a slave. So if you do these things, it will take you closer to Jannah. So it's zakat money, can be used to liberate a slave. For example, a Muslim who's in bondage. And if he can free him by paying the master some money, what is in debt, so he can give this money to the slave and he can get his freedom. Or he can give the money directly to the master and free the slave. In the context of today, if there are some Muslim captives who are maybe prisoners of war, and if some money can be given to the people who have held them captive, and if they free them, then zakat money can be used to free the Muslims. Thirdly, it can also be used, for example, someone by mistake accidentally kills a person. And if the relatives of the person who has been killed require diya money, require blood money, so zakat money can also be used for blood money in cases of accident in which someone is killed and so that it can free the Muslims. So these are the various heads come under the category of rakab freeing of captives. Thank you. In terms of a person who has a debt and wants to pay the debt back, can they apply for zakat to pay that debt? As far as the person who's a debtor, as mentioned in the Quran, the sixth category is garimun, those who are in debt. So those who are in debt, they can surely ask for zakat money. They can apply, they can ask for zakat money. Because normally a person may not be aware that a person is in debt. So he can ask. He can even beg. And there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, poem number three, hadith number 3777, where a person comes and begs for the Prophet. A lot of loss that is taking place. He buys some fruits and there's a loss in his business and he's in great debt. So he goes to the Prophet and begs him to help him. So the Prophet says that give him out of charity, give him out of zakat money. But even after money was given, it wasn't sufficient to pay his debt back. So the person who he owed the debt to, the Prophet says, take what you get and write off the rest of the debt. And there's a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 2271, where a person who is in debt, he comes to the Prophet and he begs the Prophet for help. So the Prophet says, wait till we get the sadqa and inshallah we'll give the sadqa money. The Prophet tells him, that it's not permitted for a person to beg unless he falls in three categories. Number one is unless he's in debt. He can keep on begging till he has given back his debt. Category two is a person who has been struck by a calamity and doesn't have the basic requirements of sustenance. So he can beg till he gets his sustenance. 
And third is a person who has been smitten by poverty. And he is very poor and he comes in the fuqa category. Then also he can beg till the time he gets his basic necessity. So for a person who's in debt, according to Islamic Sharia, he can apply, he can ask, and he can receive the zakat money. Dr. Zakir, can zakat fund be used in order to propagate Islam? And furthermore, does this category fall under the title Jihad Feasibilillah? The seventh category mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 60, it is Feasibilillah. Jihad Feasibilillah is one of the categories of Feasibilillah. Feasibilillah means in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jihad Feasibilillah means striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in context, it means the person who is fighting for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So surely zakat can be used for paying the salary of a person who's fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can be used for buying weapons if he is fighting to protect the Muslims. In the broader sense, jihad fi sablillah means striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. But the category mentioned in the Quran is fi sablillah, that is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And surely in this category, it can be used for the propagation of Islam. For example, it can be used for distribution of Islamic literature. It can be used for holding Islamic conferences in which people will come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this category can also come in Mawla Fatwa Khulub, those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam. And furthermore, zakat can be used for propagation, like having Islamic program on the satellite channel. And there are fatwas from different fuqahas that zakat can also be used to fund Islamic channels, which is a non-profit channel, and Islamic satellite channel, so that the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it reaches throughout the world. So one of the best way of propagation today is a satellite channel, and we can use zakat fund even for supporting a satellite channel. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, it's mentioned the hadith of Sunan Abu Daud, volume number two, in the book of zakat, hadith number 1631, that a rich person can receive zakat under five categories. Number one is for jihad fi sablillah. Number two, if he is administrating the funds of zakat. Number three, if he gets into debt. Number four, he can use zakat money to buy something from a poor person who has received as zakat. And number five, that if his neighbor who was poor who receives zakat and use that fund to give a meal to the neighbor who's rich. So even though it is zakat, he can accept it. So there are the five categories mentioned. But in general, alhamdulillah, zakat can be used for the propagation of Islam, alhamdulillah. Okay, Dr. Zakir, what about in the case of a rich person who happens to be traveling and runs into problems, as it does happen when you're traveling? Is that person eligible to receive zakat? As far as the last category of zakat is concerned, that's Ibn Sabil, that is a wayfarer or a traveler. If a person who's traveling, and if he gets stranded in a foreign land, even though he's rich, for example, a rich American comes and someone robs his suitcase and all his money, and he's stranded. So zakat money can be used for buying his ticket to go back home. He's a Ibn Sabir, he's a wayfarer. One option can be he can take loan and return the money back, but even he can take zakat money. And this is a very good provision in Islam because, for example, a stranger in a strange land, who will know him? How can you trust him with loan? You know, a new person is there. You may not trust him. So if you can give zakat, it is obligation. It's obligated to you. So you can give it to a rich person also, and he can use, but it should only be used for going back. You can't use zakat's fund so that he stays for long there and he uses the hotel and he has luxurious food, etc. It should be stood that he goes back to his place so that you help him out with the minimum requirement so that he reaches back safely home. Dr. Saki, what about the different categories of people who are not eligible to receive a zakat? Could you explain to the viewers who they are? Among the categories who are not eligible, those who do not fall in the eight categories mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter number nine, verse number 60, but natural are not eligible to receive zakat as a general rule. But there are some people who may fall in the eight categories mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 60, yet they may not be eligible. 
First is the descendants of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, hadith number 2055, that once the Prophet sees a date falling down, and he said, I would love to eat it, but I'm afraid that it may be of charity, because the thing of charity cannot be consumed by the Prophet and his family. There's another hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the Book of Zakat, hadith number 1491, where Hassan ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, once ate a date from what was part of the charity. So the Prophet said that expel it from your mouth because the family of the Prophet, they cannot eat from what is given in charity. The reason is basically that people should not allege that the Prophet, you know, is taking zakat, zakat is compulsory of the Muslims and Prophet having from it. So it is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has seen to it that people should not lay an allegation. That's what I feel is one of the reasons. And the second category, those people who may fall in that category that are not eligible is if he's a non-Muslim, if he's a non-believer. As Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, there's a hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1395, the Prophet said that it's compulsory to give zakat on your wealth, on your property, and take wealth from the rich and give it to the poor. He told the Muslims, so it means that non-Muslims, but is excluded. Even the rich man is excluded. The rich man, you cannot fall in the category who cannot receive zakat. And furthermore, the Prophet said, it's mentioned in the hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 661, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that a person who is rich and able-bodied, he should not be given zakat. That means a rich person who can really do some work and do a job, so but naturally should not be given zakat unless he is doing a job and the salary he gets is not sufficient for his basic needs. Then but naturally he may be able-bodied yet you can give. But a normal person with able body who is not doing a job and begging and asking for zakat, the Prophet never approved of it. And the last category is you cannot give zakat to a person who's a dependent. He may fall in the eight categories. He may be poor, he may be masakin, he may be needy, he may be in debt. But a person who's a dependent, like for example, a person cannot give zakat to his wife, or the wife is a dependent. A person cannot give zakat to his son or his daughter, because the children are dependent on the father. Similarly, a son cannot give zakat to his father and mother because they are the dependents. So this is the fifth category who zakat cannot be given, even though they may fall in the eight categories of who have been permitted to receive zakat in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 60. Dr. Zakir, in the case of a person who wishes to give zakat to a non-dependent family member, what is the ruling on that?